This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here, and welcome to another sculpting video. This one's pretty cool because I'm collaborating with Casey Golden. If you're not familiar with Casey Golden, she is an extremely talented artist, illustrator, YouTuber, and self-proclaimed ant queen. She has tons of amazing illustration videos on her channel that are so entertaining and satisfying to watch. She also uploads multiple times a week, bringing you quality content on a regular basis. Casey, I don't know how you do it. I actually met Casey and hung out with her a couple times at VidCon, and she's a really cool down-to-earth person. We talked about doing a collab together when we got back, and we're actually doing it, so that's pretty neat. So be sure to check out her channel at the end of this video, and of course, you won't want to miss her her portion of our collaboration. Everything for her is linked down below. And then be sure to stay tuned until the end of my video so that you can see her reaction to my finished sculpture. So basically for the collab, I told her what to draw and then I will be sculpting her drawing. This is essentially an episode of Sculpt This, but Casey Golden Edition. I told her to draw a vampire and I gave her total creative freedom with it. And I actually have not seen the drawing yet, so I'm really nervous because a lot of her work is extremely detailed and elaborate, so don't know what I'm gonna be working with. We're gonna take our first look right now. Go to my email. All right, I can see the thumbnail. Three, two, one. <laughs> Casey All right, this is definitely not what I expected at all. I was expecting something way more traditional. My first impression of this is that I am extremely intimidated because I don't know how structurally sound I'll be able to make this and like, make sure everything balances. So that's gonna be interesting, especially with the huge hair. But you know what? I'm up for a challenge and I told her not to be too easy on me, so she definitely delivered. This is such a cool drawing though. It looks like it's straight out of Cartoon Network. All right, so now that I know what I'm working with, here's what Casey has to say about it. Hey Ace of Clay, it's me, Casey Golden. You know, the disembodied voice you hear in your head all the time. You challenged me to create a vampire character. Well, here you go. We have what I like to call a grandpire. She's a grandma vampire. Big hair, big hips, big feet. You know I had to make things a little tough for you, so good luck. Okay, I think that sounds good. We're ready to roll. All right, before we get started, here's another look at Casey's drawing. Like she said, it's a grandpire, so it's an elderly vampire, and she drew her at multiple different angles, so it's gonna make it a little easier for me to sculpt. All right, first step, armature. And as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you wanna purchase anything. Here I'm just shaping out my armature wire, using her drawing to sort of guide me and make sure that I get that stance as close as possible. Once I have that done, I just attach the arms with some floral wire. And now we're just bulking everything out with some aluminum foil, the torso and the legs. After securing all of the foil with masking tape, it's time to start adding clay. I'm using Super Sculpey Firm. So I'm just gonna cover every part of the figure with clay and get it as smooth as possible before I move on to the next step. Now we're just gonna shape out the legs so that they match the drawing, and I'm just bulking out her calves a little bit. The feet were one of the trickiest parts of this because they're so skinny in the illustration. I wanted to match that as much as possible, but still I had to make this thing capable of standing on its own. So it was a little tricky, but I got it to a point that worked. And then here I just, I removed some of the clay from her back because I need to make it a little more hunched over and larger. So instead of just adding a big blob of clay on it and weighing it down, I'm just adding some more foil before adding more clay on top of that. Then once all the clay's on, we're just gonna smooth it out really nice. Now for the next step, we're gonna create the bottom of her dress. And I just ran my clay through my pasta machine on the thickest setting, and I'm just cutting it to size, measuring it on the figure. As you can see, this is my second attempt. I tried attaching it before and just pulled it off to start over. So that's what we're doing here. And I'm just blending the top edge in with everything else and connecting it in the back. Once everything's at a decent point, it's time to detail her chest. Thank you, Casey. Now 
And at one point I added the bamboo skewer for her neck and now we're just going to add some clay around that to shape the actual neck itself. Then once the neck is on, it's time to create the collar. This is just a snake of clay rolled out pretty thin and I'm just adding it to the top of her torso in the shape of the collar and then blending one edge in with everything else. Now I'm just gonna nitpick everything a little bit and then brush everything with clay softener to remove fingerprints and get her ready for her first bake. All right, that's looking pretty good. Then once she's out of the oven and completely cooled down, let's see if she stands. She stands, and that's awesome. Now I'm just gonna sand some areas really quick just to get them as smooth as possible. Now could I have smoothed her out more before I baked her? Yes, but I was just too worried about smashing her, so I decided to sand her instead. Now we're gonna start her sweater. And just like the bottom of her dress, I just ran the clay through my pasta maker on the thickest setting. I'm adding it to the figure to measure it and cut it to size, and then shape it out. Once I'm ready to permanently attach her sweater, I'm just adding some bacon bond first. And once that's done, I'm just gonna blend the top edge of it in with her shoulders so that everything is seamless. And then before I start her head, I just wanna talk a little bit about our sponsor. Well, hello, it's my face again. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses that cover dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. A premium membership with them will get you unlimited access so you can enjoy all of the classes and communities that are just right for you. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can click the link at the top of the description box below to get your first two months of Skillshare for free. So whether you wanna learn some new skills, build on skills you already have, or even grow within your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do it. Like I've mentioned in previous previous videos, I am personally drawn to their project management courses. One that I'm going to share with you today is called Productivity Habits That Stick by Mike Vardy. Here he talks about how to work more efficiently, create daily routines, and even free time and energy to focus on the things that matter. Skillshare is also very affordable with an annual subscription running you about 10 bucks a month. So don't forget, if you'd like it on this offer and you want two months of Skillshare for free, go ahead and click that link at the top of the description box. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. All right, now it's time for her head. I'm just shaping out the internal structure with aluminum foil and then covering that in clay. Looking at the illustration, her head is sort of like gourd shaped. So I'm just mimicking that as close as possible. Now, because Casey's illustration is sort of at this three quarter pose, I didn't know if her mouth was actually crooked. I thought that maybe it was like a perspective thing, but I decided to make it crooked straight on too, just so it looks closer to the illustration. And I'm kind of glad that I did in the end. Now that I have the indent done for the mouth, it's time to add the teeth. I'm just adding the normal human shaped teeth first, and then we're gonna go in with some fangs. Once the fangs are in and blended in carefully, I'm just gonna go in with my Explorer tool to press out all of the spaces in between each tooth. Now we're gonna go in and add some of her wrinkles. And then start the eyes. But not really, we're actually gonna do the nose next. And to make the nose, I'm using a toothpick that I'm filing down to a very skinny tip, just like her drawing. Thank you again, Casey. This was actually a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be, so that's good. Then I just press the toothpick in there as you saw, and then I'm just adding the clay around the base to connect it to the head. Then we're going to refine everything a little bit with my Explorer tool. Then we're going to brush on some Bacon Bond for added reinforcement and blending. And now it's time to start the eyes. I'm just shaping out the eye sockets with my medium ball stylus. And then adding the eyeballs. And then adding that one sad eyelid to the larger eye. At this point, I remember being very happy about how this was turning out because it was actually looking like the drawing. Now we're gonna add her little bangs here. Now for the ears, I'm just creating the armature for them by twisting some floral wire together, adding it to the head, and then adding the clay on top of that. Looking at the illustration, she has very long, pointy, triangular ears.
After finishing the other ear off camera, just seeing how she looks with her head on. And then I'm going to poke some holes into her head where future toothpicks will be to support the giant hair buns on her head. Thank you again, Casey. Then once all the details are done on the head, it's time to brush the surface with clay softener to remove fingerprints. And then once it's baked and completely cooled down, it's time to start the hair. I'm just adding those toothpicks in really quick. And then adding some more clay to continue the hair. And then before I get any further with her hair, I'm just going to add her little headband thing, like so, making sure it's shaped correctly. Then I'm going to go in with my Explorer tool to add the hair details. Alright, for the next step, we're going to add her collar, which is an extension of her sweater. This was a little tricky to do, but I figured it out. It took a couple times, but... Like I said, I figured it out and it worked. So once I got it to be the right size, I'm just blending it in with the rest of her sweater using my spoon tool and just shaping everything out with my fingertips, trying to get it to be as close to the drawing as possible. Then here I'm just trimming off some excess using my Excel blade. Use code Ace of Clay at ExcelBlades.com for 15% off your purchase or visit ExcelBlades.com slash Ace of Clay. Once the collar is on and everything's looking pretty good, we're just going to finish off the edges of the sweater like so. Not bad. I'm pretty happy with it. Alright, next step. What's the next step? I don't remember. Oh, the hair buns. And these, like I said, were very tricky because they had to be very light so that they wouldn't make her fall backwards. And the toothpicks were actually too far towards the front so I had to like finagle some wire in there to get them positioned correctly. Don't do this. Alright, and then once everything is at a pretty good point, I'm just going to go in with my pin tool to add all of the lines in the hair to match the illustration. Then once the hair is looking pretty good, we're just going to pre-bake this. Hope nothing breaks. Nothing broke! Alright, next step we're going to do the arms. We're going to start with the one where the hand is in her pocket, and thank you Casey for this, I don't like making hands, and this was one last hand I had to make. Now we're just finishing off that pocket here with that little piece of clay. Now it's time to figure out her IV pole, so we're just using this bamboo skewer. I cut it to size, and then I'm just going to add the clay to her other arm first before I start attaching the pole. Now we're just going to make her hand really quick. This wasn't too bad. And then before attaching the hand, I just need to bend the wire and insert the bamboo skewer and tighten everything a little bit. And I'm going to add the hand on top of that. If you can see, I cut a slit down the middle of the hand so that it fits into the wire. Once that's looking pretty good, we're just going to add her sleeve now. Now I'm just going to add the little hooks at the top of the pole that also double as the little bat's feet. 
and I'm just creating those with wire using my players to help me out then I realize that it's easier to do it when it's not connected to the figure so take it off then I'm just sculpting the bat really quick out of one piece of clay and then I am cutting out the wings for the bat and then to attach these to the bat I pre-bake the wings and then poke them into the uncured bat with a little bit of bacon bond and it worked great then after adding a little bit of clay to the top of the pole I'm just pressing on the bat now with a little bit of bacon bond as well and then now we're gonna make the blood bag and I was gonna try to do something fancy with this but I really didn't have time for any trial and error so I end up just sculpting it and painting it to match her illustration maybe one day I will get crazy with resin we'll see and then to hang the bag from the hook on the pole I'm just adding a little eye pin you can get these in the jewelry section of your craft store and then I'm adding some wire into the bottom which will be the tubing and then before I bake everything one last time I'm just coating the pole in some bacon bond and then after she's baked and completely cooled down and the blood bag has been added it's time for paint all of the paints and varnishes that I use in this video are folk art brand acrylics then I'm starting with her skin and to create this shade I mixed tapioca buttercup and warm white together and that's looking pretty good after a few coats of that it's time to paint the eyes I'm using warm white for these and then I brighten them up some more with some titanium white later on now I'm just painting the black under her teeth like so very carefully and then now I'm painting her teeth titanium white Now I'm just going in with my fine paintbrush to paint in her irises, starting on the larger eye and then the smaller eye. And I don't really use any crazy painting techniques on her just because this is such a flat drawing. Nothing wrong with that, it's just a completely different style so I just want to match it as much as possible. I don't want to get too crazy with any shading or anything. Alright, then to create this pink color for her nose cheeks and eyelid I mixed some imperial red with her skin color now I'm going in with some dark brown to darken the wrinkles on her skin then once all of her skin and her face is done I'm just gonna start painting her hair I'm using the color boulder for this, not mixed with anything, just straight up boulder. Wow, we're getting close. For the next step, I'm just going to go in and darken all of the lines in her hair with some pure black. Then we're going to paint her sweater pretty much the same color of the clay this is just the color boulder mixed with a little bit of black now we're gonna start some of those red details do her headband really quick with some imperial red let's compare not bad pretty close now I'm just gonna darken the details in her ears with some dark brown like so and then paint the dark red on the inside of her collar half of the footage of me painting her collar was out of frame which is why there was only that little bit there but you're not missing much now we're just going to go in and paint her dress with some imperial red get that pretty much done i was really happy with how she was looking at this point now we're just going to go in and darken the wrinkles in her legs with some dark brown And then paint the IV pole with some dark gray. Now for her shoes. Now we're going to paint her little bat friend black. And then the details on the back of her sweater. We're going to paint those 
nice vampire lips and two patches. Then once all the details are done on her back, we're just going to go in with some little clusters of black lines to create that stylized sweater texture. Prickly sweater texture. Then I painted the little bat's face too, if you saw that. Now we're just painting the blood bag. We're starting with white, and then we're going to go in with all of the blood details. Then we're going to paint the tubing white too, and then add the little areas of blood going through it. And then as a final detail on the blood bag, we're just going to glaze it with some glossy varnish. And we're done! But wait, not so fast. We forgot the buttons. Why? How did I miss that? So I'm just going to sculpt them really quick, bake them, and then attach them with some E6000 industrial adhesive. And then I paint a couple details on them too, once they're cured. Now she's done! Casey Golden's Grand Pyre is complete! Now be sure to stay tuned to see her reaction to it. some clayers clay gang I'm gonna be taking a peek at this grandpire here we go oh my gosh I love her and you did her saggy grandma boobs so tastefully so congratulations you did so good with the collar what are you talking about she looks even cooler in 3d like her arm and her jacket looks so legit and chill I love it thank you and that's a wrap. I really hope you like how Casey's vampire turned out. I was definitely intimidated at first, but I'm glad I pushed through. Thank you so much, Casey, for doing this with me. Everyone, be sure to check out her channel and see how she designed the vampire in the first place. Everything is linked in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay, and I will see you in the next one.